Hey y'all, this is Urs, coming at you with the preview for the next Civ series about to hit the channel. We're gonna do something a little different here, it's been a long time in coming and planning, and I've seen a couple requests for something like this in the comments, so you're about to get it. We are gonna be playing a huge Earth 18 Civs with true start locations. Uh, that is the gist of it. It's gonna be big, it's gonna take a while, and it's gonna be pretty epic, I think. I did some testing. It should be all working. We may hit a couple snags here and there, but as far as I know, my computer can more or less handle it. And uh, the mods themselves should be compatible. I'm also going to be doing something unique of the game pace here, and this is not going to be marathon. It's going to be a weird hybrid. It's a mod called Historic Game Pace, which means for a map of this scale, I kind of felt the time needs to be as the same kind of epic scale. Uh, it's basically a mix between standard and marathon. The research times for uh, science are marathon speed, so instead of taking eight turns to research mining, you'll take like, I don't know, 40? Uh, something like that. But the production times are standard. So this way, you know, when you're actually going to try to conquer the world, as we will very much try to do, uh, you can actually go to war in the ancient era and have time to utilize those catapults uh, before you immediately turn them into trebuchets by the time you're ready to go. You know, you actually use those ancient era units. And if there's a unique unit for an era, it has, especially early on, which is a chance of being good for that sieve rather than just being immediately obsoleted because the early techs go by so fast. So, historic game pace. I'll talk more about it as we get into the game. But you know there's 18 leaders and you know those are mods. So let's get into that. First leader up. Uh, it's the Tonga Civ, one of the Polynesian uh, Civs. There's a Polynesian pack out there. It's pretty cool. It'll be linked. Uh, the guy is Ahoy Eitu, the great leader. Whenever you first meet a Civ or city state, earn a random culture, faith, gold, science, or science bonus. Sorry, <laughs> I went ahead of myself. What else is there? Earn more influence from completing city state quests. So, explore, exploratory slash CS ally kind of Civ. Should be pretty interesting. Uh, unique unit. It is a tribe replacement. It's the Tongiaki. Uh, looks a little stronger, I think. And uh, you can enter ocean tiles with this thing. So kind of like the base game's Polynesian uh, unit. you can, Or the ability, rather, not the unit. Here is not an ability for everything they have. It's an ability for a trireme. But this is the neat thing. When an embarked unit begins its turn on the same tile, it may also enter ocean tiles. So if you use these strategically, you can send folks wee across the seas right off the bat. So neat way to go. Uh, the other unique item is the granary replacement called the Malae, I think. I'm going to maul these names from most of these sieves, so just bear with me. Gives you plus one food from sources of crabs and fish. Not bad. And a plus two food the city is adjacent to at least three coastal tiles. So, yeah, that could be a lot of food. And they're going to be starting near uh, the coast. So, methinks they'll be able to make good use of this. Next one up, Alaric of the Goths. Uh, Non-mounted military land units can use enemy roads before the industrial era. That's pretty good for invasion planning. I do say so myself. Additionally, capturing a foreign capital triggers a golden age. He may just be aggressive, you think? Uh, the unique unit replacement is the uh, the longsword, right? The longsword, the swordsman replacement called the Gadraut, I think. A frontline unit and can double heal when pillaging a non-road improvement, which is pretty cool. And it starts to drill one. Not too shabby. Still requires iron. About the same strength as swordsman. A couple benefits to go along with that whole invasion thing. They heal double from pillaging. That's it's a lot of heal. It's a lot of heal. Yeah. It's going to be good. You heal about 25 from pillaging, so 50 is not too shabby. Uh, the other replacement item is the stable replacement called the Hove. It gives you plus one faith from uh, horses, cattle, and sheep, and also plus some production, and 10% production for land units. It's a little different than the baseline stable. And you have to have one of these resources improve with the pasture, but that's about it. It's really, really, I think, a neat way to kind of tie into the whole land unit production, send a bunch of godrots out, and also have your um, faith production going along the same way. So yeah, pretty cool. He may be aggressive, I'm just saying. Next one up. Oh boy. Kunyam baby. Uh, I think, from the Tupi. Uh, their unique ability, allied city-states that are not militaristic may gift units. Pretty cool. Gifting units to city-states grants more influence. Also pretty cool. Uh, unique unit is the... Huh, ui, ui babaete, maybe, I think. It can indirect fire, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's the ability to shoot over terrain that you normally can't see over as long as something is spotting for you. So... 
if you get stuck in the jungle, like these guys may have a start in, they're a Brazilian area, I guess, ancient uh, native peoples to the Brazil uh, space that we know in the modern day, uh, you can shoot over the jungle. So this could be really, really annoying to deal with when you're trying to invade them, hint, hint. Uh, when an enemy is killed inside a city's territory, the Uibabaete is garrisoned on. It adds two turns for We Love the King Day, and the ability is called Ritual Cannibalism. Fascinating. So, Maloka is unique, a very unique improvement. It's unlocked at the calendar and only be built in jungle tiles with resources and without hills. It connects the resources built upon, and during We Love the King Days, the Malokas also generate plus one culture and food for the city. So a neat way of kind of utilizing that whole jungle theme, I think. These guys could be really annoying to try to invade, and especially with they get enough alliances with city states, it could be a force to be reckoned with, so pretty cool. Next one up, Jala of the Garamantes, uh, unique ability. Units ignore terrain costs when moving along land trade routes connected to your empire, and start with plus one movement if they begin their turn on such a trade route. So very tradeful land trading empire feel to this. City tiles also act as a source of fresh water. Historically, that's pretty cool. They were able to build cities that no one thought could actually um, function in the middle of the desert. So that's kind of a nod to that. The Plume Nomad, Recon Unit. Uh, unique replacement of the Scout. It excels at moving over desert tiles, which has double, I think, movement over desert. And can enter enemy territory with no problem. Maximum of six. They don't cost any maintenance. Otherwise, you'll be able to spam these suckers out and put them everywhere. That would be really annoying. So you can have a maximum of six of these. Unique improvement. The Fogara gives plus two food, which is huge, and plus one more with fertilizer. That is pretty, pretty significant. It can only be built on desert, however. And it provides food on desert hill tiles, basically. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. It also creates a source of fresh water, irrigating adjacent tiles. So uh, get these on your desert hills irrigate the lands around it and build farms that don't starve you again another thing of how to survive in the desert uh the garamantes are very good at that next one up anatum from S the sumerians uh unique ability cradle of civilization simple but powerful newly founded cities start with plus one pop bonus increases to plus two if the city is settled just into a river so early start kick starting everything off the vulture is a unique warrior replacement it uh, moves quickly along rivers. My guess is double movement along rivers. And starts with extra XP. I think you basically get one promotion for free. I think it's plus 15 when you build it. So, yep. First promotion is free. After that, good luck. The uh, other building here is pretty interesting. It's the Ziggurat. It has one scientist slot. It's an early scientist slot because it's a temple replacement. So, this is really interesting. It kickstarting your science early. And it also gives you plus one faith from specialists. So, very powerful. I think it gives you plus two faith baseline, just like a temple. Um, but it, if you staff it, it gives you even more. And that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, he may be a force to be reckoned with. Iware of Benin. The unique ability, the defensive strength of all cities is increased by 15%. And your capital starts with walls already constructed. So, again, my guess is probably pretty difficult to invade. Land units adjacent to an Ia, which we'll discuss in a moment. Heal plus eight hit points every turn, regardless of previous action. So kind of like a mini march promotion. So, what are the unique things? The pikeman replacement of the Isien Muenro. I'm going to keep trying these, and if I butcher them horribly, I'm sorry. Uh, good at uh, good at against horses, just like the baseline pikeman. Uh, my guess is, and I knew how this works. These guys, I think, ignore zone of control and get plus one movement um, if they're flanking somebody. I think that's the situation. These are not very good descriptions. Um, but if you go follow the link below that I have in the comments always for any of the mods that I'm using, uh, you'll be able to more clearly see what those things do. Anyway, unique improvement, the Ia. Plus 25% defense, so kind of like a fort. And it gains plus one gold, plus one production in industrialization. So, <laughs> it heals stuff with plus eight hit points per turn. Uh, basically tying into the UA. If it's built adjacent to a city, it'll also provide plus one gold and plus one production, so spacing them well is key. And after industrialization research, another plus one gold and another plus one production. So an interesting way of making things very useful. The only caveat, only on flatland tiles and no resource. Pretty cool. It's similar to the fourth EI is destroyed rather than damaged when pillaged. Fascinating. 
newsletters and all. So Iwate, again, probably a good defensive uh, sieve that doesn't have to worry about defense too much, so then could spend his resources doing something else, like, I don't know, attacking somebody. Who is next? Uh, Mr. Henry Parks, the Prime Minister of Australia. So, we needed an Oz sieve. We gotta have someone out there in Oceania, and who better than Australia? Settlers found populated cities that generate plus one tourism. Plus one tourism for each outgoing naval trade route. Cities that generate plus two tourism or more expand cultural borders twice as fast. Hint, hint. Settle on the coast. Send trade routes. Profit. Unique unit. Uh, the digger. It is a replacement for the Great War Infantry. It's basically very good at defending itself as a friendly territory. 15% four lands bonus. It has cover one. And apparently it can fight better near coasts. My guess is there's a combat bonus related to that. Really neat part. Unit can be upgraded from workers directly and upgrades to mechanized infantry. So skips over the infantry part of it, but goes directly from workers. You can easily get these guys up in a pinch if you're suddenly invaded or your workers become uh, military units if you have the money, I'm assuming. Unique replacement for the Great Writer is the Prime Minister. You get extra tourism when it appears and provides political quotes as great works of writing. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Um, and all, <laughs> all non-puppeted coastal cities receive plus one tourism per own land tile outside workable limits when these guys spawn. So, tourism-focused sieve. Let's see how the computer uses them. Next up, Kuchum Khan from the Siberian Khanate. Uh, symbol of a powerful UA. All land units, with the exception of siege units, can move after attacking. Wow. That's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, let's just hope he doesn't have anything too strong. Oh, wait! The Siberian Tatar. Wonderful. Ranged combat of 16, combat strength of 15, 5 movement. This is basically a freaking Keshik, more or less. It comes at, uh, comes at chivalry. It's scary. Ignores terrain costs and greater combat strength in rough terrain. This thing is going to be an absolute, absolute sledgehammer. It even has drill one. Like, wow. That's like a turbo Keshik. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about how much death this guy's going to be able to deal out. Other unique item is a granary replacement called the Yaranga. Um, in addition to basic granary stuff, worked tundra or snow tiles yield plus one extra food. Given that they're going to be starting in Siberia or near Siberia, that's probably a good thing and immediately available from agriculture. Probably going to be necessary given what uh, tiles you may be using. Next up is Lautaro from the Mapuche. Uh, combat units may enter rival territory without open borders. Oh, that's not going to be annoying as hell for anyone starting near him. Increased generation of experience in battle. All right, militaristic much. After the discovery of calendar, units that die on an unimproved or pillaged tile create a Chemamul. Let's just go to what that is. Chemamul. Plus one culture. Yields plus one culture and plus two faith. But only plus one culture to other sieves. But it consumes the worker when built. But as you know, you can spawn them uh, if you kill something on an unimproved or pillaged tile. And uh, <laughs> they claim the tile has been created upon when not built by workers, as you know. Which is going to be interesting when you kill things. You can stand these up and then you kind of take territory for killing units. Very interesting. And units starting their turn on Chimamul will earn double experience from combat and a combat bonus. And will restore the Chimamul if it was pillaged. So an I interesting way of, of getting territory through war via a... Odd little unique improvement, I have to say. Curious to see how the computer uses that one. Ah, uh, Grandpa Lenin from the Soviet Union. Uh, hint, hint, or rather, I'm disclosing now, we will be playing Lenin. You probably guessed that from the uh, preview screen with the giant bald head of death, by the way. Jan Boruta, as always, is supplying the awesome thumbnails. Uh, some epic stuff. I gotta, I, I gotta say, I really love this one. But we will be playing Lenin, spreading the uh, revolution across the globe. So, Lenin, unique ability. Stoneworks, windmills, forges, and factories may be built in any city, regardless of terrain or resource requirements, and yield plus two tourism. So, two things there. A, tourism early with stoneworks and forges. That's pretty cool. Two, you don't need to worry about coal. You don't need to worry about stone. You don't need to worry about iron. And factories being the most important thing here, without a worry about coal, it just makes your life so much easier. You don't have to worry about getting screwed at industrial era and with the TSL and not knowing how these things balance out. I figured that was a good hedge of a bet to keep ourselves afloat and our production booming. Worker improvement speed is also increased by 20%. So these are not unique. These are just the uh, 
don't worry about the everything around you versions of these things. There's really two uniques here. One is the Levy. It is a slightly weaker Great War Infantry, only 48 combat strength instead of 50. But kind of like the um, the Gothic Gadrout, you can use enemy roads with this thing. And that's pretty cool. It'll easily help invasion tactics. Should we choose to employ them? <laughs> we will. The last thing is a constabulary replacement. It stores plus 1% food after new citizen is born for every two production. So your city hits 30 production. That's the maximum 15% extra food carried over. It's kind of like an aqueduct baked into a spy agency. Pretty cool, I think. It'll help our cities grow. It'll help our cities stay strong and prevent the foreign devils from stealing our wonderful Soviet tech. Onward and upward. We're getting there. We're almost halfway there, I think. Lincoln. Lincoln is going to be in the game. From the good old US of A. Choose a unique wartime bonus upon the outbreak of war with Major Civ. These are actually pretty cool. If you've never played as Lincoln, try it. It's really, really neat. Uh, cities also construct gold buildings automatically. Uh, this works, and I've played Lincoln before, so I can explain this a little better. Uh, cities basically take one turn to construct a gold building. Uh, so a market, a bank, or a stock exchange, and it costs one production. So basically, you can get them as soon as you queue them up. Next turn, they're guaranteed to be built. And that's how that works. Uh, you have a monitor, which is a ironclad replacement. There is two varieties of there are sorry two varieties of this melee and ranged. Uh, if you upgrade, it only goes to the melee unit. The ranged unit is the scary one because it actually has a three tile range and has a bonus versus city. So this is kind of like a Seaborn early, well, not really that early, but Seaborn artillery. Frightening, frighteningly good. It basically sets up to fire and just blow the crap out of everything. These are really strong. A reason to have excess coal is Lincoln. Other unique item is a, another unique unit, a cannon replacement that uh, basically loses the uh, a lot of the city bonus. It only has 100%, but it has a bonus against land units. And if it's in a fort or a citadel, it increases the defensive stuff around it. So kind of like a defensive defensive type cannon. It can still take cities, but it's not quite as good. Uh, it's okay. This is way more interesting, I think, as a unique unit. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh, one non-modded civ in the game. Montezuma. Why? Because you can't have a big game with Montezuma. This is baseline Montezuma. Nothing special here. Why did I put Monty in the game? Well... Trying to spread out the sieves across the continents and making sure they're all compatible and functional with true start locations on a huge earth turned out to be hard, but I managed to do it everywhere except in Mexico. Not a single Mexican sieve wanted to work with the mod. One Mexico didn't work. Other Mexico didn't work. The Zapotecs didn't work. I tried. I tried to debug. Just wouldn't show up in the list. So Monty's going to get the nod. Sorry. But he's always fun, right? He's going to give Lincoln what for and all that good stuff. So Monty's going to be there. Let's just move on. You know what baseline Monty is like by now. Paul Kruger of the Boers. Uh, he will be starting in the game in the South African area. Plus one movement for workers, settlers, and great people. And settlers may withdraw when attacked by melee unit. Very interesting. Plus 25% defense to any unit stationed on a farm. My guess is they're going to have a lot of farms. This may be powerful. First unique. Uh, it's a Gatling gun replacement called the Commando. Range combat of 28, combat of 28. So weaker, weaker than the Gatling gun, but has plus one movement. Can move after attacking. So kind of a more of a hit and run unit than not. Um, basically, yeah. Da, 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 da. And also unlocked a rifling as opposed to industrialization. So that's interesting. And upgrades into Great War Infantry. So going to be an interesting transition from a ranged unit to a melee. Not sure how good that's going to be, but it's fascinating. If they retain that, cannot move after can move after attacking uh, bonus as an infantry. That'll be pretty cool, though. All right, the other unique thing is the Stas Museum. Why are there two of them here? Well, let's just call it that way. Uh, unique building, two slots for great work of art, just like the museum. Uh, it gives you plus two percent growth, however, for every two tourism produced by the city, up to a maximum of twenty percent. So just like the constabulary grows, Lenin Stas Museums grow the Boers, and it provides a golden age points for every farm worked by the city. Should be pretty interesting and also unlocks at industrialization instead of archaeology. So the tech tree is shifted downwards for some reason for Paul Kruger of the Boers. That should be an interesting uh, situation as well. Onward and upward, friends. We're getting there. Kapak of the Karal, um, representing South America. What? 
Inland cities receive, receiving a trade off from a coastal city also receive the base yields of all improved sea resources worked by that city. Building a plantation provides a production boost in all coastal cities. Pretty cool. Um, this is neat because if you have whales and or yeah, I don't know, coral or crabs improved on the coast, inland cities getting trade routes from there, which you often do to fuel growth for your capital if it's inland, will get an extra copy of that extra base yields and uh, all the food and the production and also the luxuries based on that. So that's pretty damn cool. It's a unique mechanic. We'll see how the AI can use it. Not sure how AI plays Kapak, but we'll find out. Either way, Fisher, worker replacement. The last time we saw one of these. Important thing, it can improve both land and water tiles. If I honestly could have any modded unit in every single one of my games, it would be the Fisher. Absolutely amazing that you don't have to build work boats. So huge, so clutch, so choice. Last thing is a monument replacement, very early on stuff. Uh, allows food and production to be moved from the city along trade routes inside your sieve. So basically, instantaneous. Um, you don't need to wait for granary or workshop to move food and production. And this goes along with the whole inland trade routes thing. So very important. And also gives you plus one production to boot in addition to the two culture that a monument does normally. Simple, but powerful. Uh, both the uniques are simple but powerful. The UA is very interesting to use. Pretty neat, well-designed sieve. Robert won the Bruce. Robert the first, I guess, the Bruce. From Scotland. Uh, melee units receive a combat boost when there are two or more adjacent enemy units. So if you're getting invaded, you're going to be fine. Plus one culture for every two hill tiles adjacent to a city. So an early culture boost if you plan your settlement well. Unique unit is the uh, longsword replacement called the Galogla or Galaglass. Um, it's still costs an iron, but receives a bonus when fighting against fortified units and ignores terrain costs. Uh, kind of like a scout with movement, and if you try to buckle down against it, it'll break your lines. Scary stuff. Other unique is a unique improvement called the Clan Castle. It gives you plus one gold and plus 50% defense. Pretty, pretty good. It gives you plus one culture with architecture. Also, additionally, yields five experience to new units trained in a city that are working the castle. Upon declaration of war against Scotland, each clan castle generates one melee infantry unit to defend the empire. So if you're at Longsword Tech, you get invaded, you have a bunch of these out, suddenly you have an army of Galo glasses ready to protect you. It'll be pretty cool. Uh, the neat thing about the experience is that like, you'll have to plan out how to work your tiles. The turn before a unit gets built, you know, switch as many as you can to the experience, uh, to the clan castle, working that within range of the city. And that way, the unit's going to come out with maximum experience and switch it back the next turn. That'll be the strategy if you're playing it as a human. We will not be playing Robert the First, the Bruce of the Scotland, but uh, we will see how they fare against the large numbers of enemies spread before them. Thana del Thur, we've seen her before. I needed a sieve that started in the northwest of North America that wasn't the Inuit, because uh, that would be way the hell too far north. We decided on Thana del Thur, the Dene. So the Dene are going to make another appearance. We talked about them in the, um, the North American First Nations free-for-all. So if you want a breakdown of them, uh, take a look at that preview episode. But basically, quick summary, tourism and great music works in the tundra. That's kind of what they do. That's their feel. That's their vibe. They can also build a pretty cool encampment. So check those out later. That's an error. We'll keep moving on. Went on to of Harappa. So start with the location of all nearby civilizations and city-state capitals. This, however, does not establish contact, but you know where they're at. Plus one trade route and a free caravan after you settle your first city. So instant caravan! That could either be awesome or horrible depending where you spawn. Uh, number one unique unit is a worker replacement called the Bullock Cart is a fast worker unit, three movement. And it earns gold for improving luxury resources. Very interesting. Uh, pr pretty much a very good early boost. So unique workers, definitely a feature of Tomatex uh, mods. Check them out. Sewer, aqueduct replacement. No gold maintenance if built adjacent to a river. Pretty damn cool. And uh, very low production cost. I think this comes really early, actually. It may not even require the aqueduct tech. I think this comes in pretty much at agriculture. Um, and basically an early aqueduct. So you grow big, you grow tall, and you gain money for improving your internal stuff. This is going to be a trading powerhouse. Last but not least, and surely not least, 
you of the Xia Dynasty. We got a unique Chinese modded sieve, people. Losing your capital, constructing a courthouse in a conquered foreign capital, completing a social policy tree starts a new dynasty and provides a new cumulative bonus. If you've never tried this sieve and seen how it plays in the hands of a human, very, very cool. You basically go through a dynastic cycle every time you finish one of these uh, events, and then you gain a kind of a stacking bonus as the game goes on. Really a, a severe snowball effect. If he gets a good start, it's going to be tough to stop him. Uh, so we may have to see if we can interdict Mr. Yu of the Xia Dynasty early. But anyway, Uniques, the Tuoma Archery Unit. It is a replacement for the Chariot Archer. It uh, basically increases the amount of experience you earn by land units around you. And I think it functions as a great general. It kind of gives that bonus. So pretty damn cool. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'll have to check to be positively sure about that. But... Again, neat early replacement, but then all that st all the good stuff goes away, which you upgraded to a knight, so boo. Last thing ever, not ever, replaces the barracks. It's the foundry. It even has a great work of art or artifact slot. Very cool. And increases the culture output of the city that is built in by 2% for every dynasty progress. So tying into that dynastic cycle thing, you want to get as many dynasties as possible, get that culture cranking. So, wow, that seemed like it took a while, and I think it did, but there's your 18 sieves that'll be appearing in this Mondo game with a true start location, huge earth map, historic arrows with standard production and marathon research times. This is going to be an epic journey, and I always said, and I think I might have said in the intro to the channel back, way back when in, in March this year, damn, this feels like it's been a long time, but it has it's only been half a year. Um, you know, sieve really is about the journey and the story you kind of craft as you go on, and I think with the scale and size and variety of civilizations and strategies we're going to see employed in this game, I think this could turn into one heck of a story. And I hope you'll join me for it as we make the equivalent of, I guess, the Civ Long War tale uh, with Lenin trying to share the uh, proletarian revolution to the rest of the world. I have an Urs, and I can't wait to bring this series to you as we start up and finish up the Scandi Melee. Enjoy the last waning days of all the opposition to the Norman Empire, but until, well, as soon as that finishes, man, we are diving into this one and seeing what kind of journey we can forge for the, uh, the Soviet people throughout the generations. Thank you so much for your attention, your time, and I will see you when we start up on this one. That's right, next time. I have an Urs. I'll see you then. Till then!